In this demo, we explore a conversational AI interface for PuppyGraph that converts natural language questions into cipher queries using Retrieval Augmented Generation, also known as RAG. Setting up our AI assistant consists of four easy steps, which are starting our puppy graph instance, connecting to our data source, modeling our relational data as a graph, and finally, querying in natural language. For today's demo, we'll be using the Northwind graph example provided by PuppyGraph. It's a classic retail data set that shows how orders move throughout the supply chain from supplier all the way to the customers. We'll be exploring our data through a variety of queries from simple aggregations to more complex questions. More specifically, we'll be asking how many suppliers are there in the system, which suppliers are associated with products that appear most frequently in customer orders, and for my top supplier, segment its customer base based on their spending habits and preferences. Now that we have a general idea of what will be covered in this video, I'll start by quickly spinning up a new puppy graph docker instance with this command line instruction. To give a quick breakdown of the command, we'll be using port 8081 for our puppy graph UI, port 8182 for our gremlin server, and port 7687 for open cipher queries over bolt. Our password will be set to puppy graph 123, and our queries are set to timeout after 5 minutes. We also always pull for the latest stable release of the PuppyGraph Docker image. Our PuppyGraph instance should be up and running now, so I'll head on over to localhost 8081 to start connecting to my iceberg tables. As per usual, I'll be using the default credentials, so that's PuppyGraph for the username and PuppyGraph123 for the password. After we've logged in, we'll be redirected to the schema page. PuppyGraph allows us to easily map the data in our iceberg tables to a graph structure defined by a JSON schema. There are several ways to do this. You can upload your schema as a JSON file that contains the catalog connectivity details, as well as how to map the data from our SQL data source to PuppyGraph. Alternatively, PuppyGraph has a create graph schema functionality where you can connect to a data source and use the UI to create a schema. We also offer some example schemas and data sets if you just want to play around with PuppyGraph. For today, I'll be using the PuppyGraph's Northwind example graph, so I can click example schema and data and select Northwind graph, which is a business graph based on the classic Northwind database containing business entities such as orders, products, and customers, showcasing complex business scenario modeling. Now that our data is loaded and they've been mapped as a graph, we're all good to go. Over here, we can actually see our schema.json file, and it is this very file that allows us to map our data stored in our relational database as a graph without having to spin up a separate graph database instance, maintain complex ETL pipelines, or deal with the hassle of a second copy of data. We also support expressive graph query languages like Cypher and Gremlin, so you'll still have easy access to the powerful graph database capabilities that you're familiar with. Let's quickly explore the data that we're working with. Since the Northwind graph simulates a supply chain, we have the usual nodes like customer, order, product, and supplier. We also have relationships that link these entities together, like which customer purchased which order, what product is supplied by which company, and what category a product belongs to. Supply chains really highlight the strength of graph queries because they're highly interconnected with complex relationships and dependencies that often require multi-hop queries to surface these insights, like understanding which supplier is pivotal to your supply chain and why that's the case. PuppyGraph comes with an open source UI. This default dashboard is a good place for reporting and exploring the data. We can actually click this edit button to see that each tile is powered by a graph query that can be customized to your needs. Not only is it a convenient way to constantly monitor the most important graph queries, it also provides an easy way for non-technical team members to focus on the data that matters. We also have a query page where you can run your Cypher and Gremlin queries and see the results with our graph visualization tool on the right. For example, if I wanted to find my top customer in the system and visualize all the products they've ordered, I can run the following query, which matches for the customer that has spent the most amount of money, and match the path for all the orders that they've purchased and the products that have been contained in them. We can even explore the data interactively. If I right-click my product note, I can even see who the supplier is and what other orders contain this particular product. Now, this is already powerful, 
but we can take it one step further with a conversational layer. In a matter of minutes, we've actually just created a knowledge graph from our relational data that contains context unique to our system. We can leverage this with GraphRag, where we can ask a chatbot in natural language prompts and get answers grounded in our data. So let's go ahead and do just that. On my screen is the custom chatbot UI that's open source and available for viewing on our GitHub. Connecting the AI assistant with PuppyGraph's MCP server gives the assistant access to the supply chain knowledge graph we created earlier. The amazing thing here is that we've managed to quickly create a graph rack system, all while bypassing a lot of the original complexity of owning and maintaining a traditional graph database setup. First things first, Let's go to the graph info tab to see that our knowledge graph got loaded in properly. Our puppy graph schema has been translated into a prompt, giving the chatbot an accurate idea of how our data is modeled. I see that all the nodes and edges have been loaded in properly. So let's test out how the chatbot performs when it's able to draw contextual information to enrich its responses. Let's start by asking a simple question. How many suppliers are there in the system? Since it's a simple query, we see that it only took one step. If we want to understand how it reached a particular conclusion, we can click the expand button and read through its thought process. Over here, we see that it issued a cipher query to match for all the supplier nodes and then counted the number of matches. Now we can raise the difficulty and ask which suppliers are associated with products that appear most frequently in customer orders. We see that the chatbot has given us the top suppliers by overall order volume, as well as the most frequently ordered individual products and their suppliers. And it also gives us a helpful summary that tells us that European suppliers dominate the list. This query is helpful not only for understanding certain preferences of the customers within our system, but also for identifying key suppliers that could serve as bottlenecks should any of them go down. We can now ask a follow-up question that builds upon this previous query. For my top supplier, segment its customer base according to their spending habits and preferences. This will allow us to understand how exactly the top supplier caters towards its customers. We see that this question is a tad bit harder than what we've asked so far, with the chatbot running four queries in order to make sure it has the necessary context to answer the question. Looking for more details, we see that the chatbot identified the top supplier, Plutzer, based off of our previous question. Over here, there was also an error that was automatically handled, with the error message feeding into the next step so the AI can properly rectify it. We see that the chatbot has actually segmented the customers based on how much they spend, as well as certain geographic patterns observed. Based on this information, it also shows the kinds of products that each of these customer segments lean towards. And from there, it provides development opportunities that show how we can continue to grow the revenue of this particular supplier. Now, these are all with the default configurations, but you might have certain requirements according to your use case that requires customization. Under the Prompt Configuration tab, you can customize how the AI Assistant behaves by configuring the four key components of the system prompt, with changes taking effect immediately for new queries. This includes defining the role of the AI and its expertise level, telling the AI how to generate the plan for queries, explaining how PuppyGraph differs from the standard cipher syntax so the AI Assistant knows how to properly interact with PuppyGraph, and finally, the output format instruction so you can easily interpret the response from the AI assistant. And we also have a debug panel, so if you want to understand why your current prompts aren't working before you tinker around with the prompt configurations, you can also check out this panel and get a detailed LLM response so you understand how the RAG system constructed the prompt and debug the issues with query generation. Now that we've explored how to create a knowledge graph and how AI assistants leverage them for context-aware text generation, let's dive deeper into the architecture that enables all of this. First, we have the Grad.io UI with an interactive web interface where you can ask questions and explore your data. On the back end, we have the typical RAG system that handles text to cipher conversion using sentence embeddings for question similarity, ChromaDB, for example, vector database storage, Clot Sonnet 4.0 for query generation, and confidence scoring. Although, while vector databases excel at finding similar items, 
it's not so great at understanding the relationships between the entities, which is where the knowledge graph comes into play. The structured graph results can be injected directly into an LLM's context window, providing more details that are unique to your data set. With Puppy Graph, you get a graph layer over your existing data, zero ETL required. This makes getting started with GraphRag easy, providing you with more accurate, up-to-date responses from your AI assistant. To help coordinate all these components, we have a Python backend that manages all the MCP server processes, integrates with the RAG system, handles the conversation history, and provides a unified API for querying and information retrieval. If you're interested in testing this out for yourself, the link and QR code to the PuppyGraph chatbot GitHub repository are shown on this screen, and it will also be linked in the description below.